More homoeroticism than an episode of HBO's Looking. We saw Tango and Cash, so you know what that means. A nigga grow a baby in his belly, rock a rhinestone vest while ripping Justin to Kelly. Or maybe see a burlesque show with Nick Crow and take a boat with speed to hitting cruise control. J Man, Big Paul, in the beautiful June. Gonna take you from the goob all the way to the room. Ran the games of Street Fighter, help to blow off steam. Just a sucker punch the odd life of Timothy Green. Shark Nato, the bird demic, how we staying alive. They call it in the badass, and he's on the line. Cranking 88 minutes, cause they cool, cool as ice. ice. Cause a bad Jim Varney looks Looking kind of nice. Paul and June getting literal. Jason is getting laid. June is making sure all the monkey shots getting paid. They judge a bunch of movies while they're making the grade. Here's a real question for you. How did this get made? Hello, people of Earth, and uh, welcome to How Did This Get Made. That is our brand new uh, theme song by Haru. That's right, I'm pronouncing that right? Okay, Haru, thank you, that is amazing. Haru is here in the room. <laughs> He's not on mic, but we've pronounced it right, we've been told. That is actually great. I've heard that song now three times, and there's I new things it. in it each time that I pick up. Uh, I am joined, as always, uh, by Jason Manzoukas. How are you, Jason? I'm good, Paul. How are you? Very good. June, Diane, the question is the same to you. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. And joining us for a record-setting third time. He was on episode one, and now on episode 101. Boom! <laughs> Please welcome back, Nick Kroll! You gonna ask me how I'm doing? Bam! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was we both rushed to get the Mad D snap out? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, I can't get there fast enough. Uh, Nick, welcome Sorry back. Uh, that, that, that adds oh, the atmosphere. No, 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 please. <laughs> no Everybody June. now expects the water pour. Yeah. <laughs> the pour classic. a loud glass of water, June. <laughs> you feel like you're in here with us. I, you know, when I was here on episode one, there wasn't this disrespectful water <laughs> pouring Sorry. during my intro questioning. Um, Did you think we'd make it somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think that app had been invented uh, yeah. either. No, no we talked about sure. this before. Uh, when you did 101 six years ago, <laughs> or number one six years ago with us, <laughs> uh, which is when we did it. When, um, when apps were a new thing. <laughs> people were still on Palm Pilots. Uh, my, Nick, my you, Palm Trio. <laughs> Nick, you're back. And the Kroll Show is back. Yes. Uh, just tell everybody when that is airing. Uh, Kroll Show airs uh, Tuesday nights at 1030 on Comedy Central. And it's got uh, Big Jason Manzoukas in it. Big J, Big JM is up in there. Big Paul, <laughs> Paul. Uh, I'm assuming Mark this, XYZ. Mark XYZ. Yes, this will uh, probably be. You passed. guys, the, I mean, obviously the world will be different. Um, and yeah. I'm, sh I'm assuming the How Did This Get Made podcast will get that Kroll Show bump. Yeah, we were oh, hoping yeah, for. Sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. um, <laughs> obviously, when June was on the show season one, uh, you guys got that Kroll Show bump. Ah, we got, we yeah. always uh, get that Kroll Show. Jason year, brought the Jason, Kroll Show. Jason oh, yeah, yeah. was there last year and got that Kroll Show bump. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people tune in. They see Eagle Wing and they're like, "I want to know that guy's podcast." Yeah, I got I to gotta figure out how to spell his name and yeah. then Google it and then find out that he's got a podcast. Uh, well, you're back. It's the third final season, and it's uh, from the stuff I've seen, from the stuff I've heard about. It sounds amazing. It sounds uh, like you can't get any better. You can't this. get any better. Uh, no, it's. I'm very, very, very pleased with it, and I would love, if if possible, at some point, and this would be breaking format, but yeah. I think I've already made the decision that we're going to do it. Yeah. Is uh, for Bob Bobby Bottle Service made a movie this year called How, The In Addition To's. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's sort of our, his version of the uh, Expendables, and I think we should do a How Did This Get oh Made my about God. Oh, my God? I would love to do <laughs> that. Absolutely. Dream of dreams. <laughs> could we do it with? Uh, yeah. Bobby could come in yeah. and do it. At some I feel point. like there has to. Be, That'd I, be very fun. I would love to do that. <laughs> um, but I uh, would imagine the In Addition To share some similarities with this movie that we're going to be yes. talking about today. <laughs> yes, there is. There is some crossover. Um, so Bobby Bottle Service is in that movie. He wrote, he directed, and he okay, starred so, in it. Yeah, like and uh, and so did Eagle Wing, um, who is a friend of Jason Manzukis's, as well as yeah. uh, uh, Chelsea Peretti as Farley and uh, CT from uh, Yeah Road, Road Rules, Road, right? The Challenge, who was also in Gigolo Horse, already aired on Comedy Central. Uh, and, and and Comedy Central on Time Warner, what channel? Cable, cable channel is that? <laughs> Until let's go through all the channels. And uh, then also on Dish, Direct and TV. also on Direct TV. Just so ATTU, our listeners I'm an know, ATTU verse guy. Oh, and I want to know where my charter heads at. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, Cox Cable. I'm gonna be real 
honest here and yeah. say that Comedy Central has got a pretty great app, and you can kind of watch all the shows. Yeah, you don't even oh, yeah. need. Nick, providers. where do you prefer we watch it? Um, I love it just in in gifts. Uh, <laughs> now you are. Tumblr. This is the end of or a Pearl vine. Show. You are wrapping it up. Yes, but it will come back for a season four of only gifts. Am yes. I correct? Yes. So that will so be. So next airing. year will just be a season of gifts. Kind of like just the been... Odd Future Show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Loiter Squad. <laughs> Loiter Squad. Yeah, that's exactly what it. I, I'm. I, you know, God willing, we'll see what happens. <laughs> if there's programmers out there, start those gifts now because. It, you'd need a lot of gifts to fill a half hour, and, and like eight or nine and a half hours, it's a lot of gifts. Yeah. Yeah, but it's all, if you go by act break, it's just like eight minutes for the first act. That's a good You know, yeah. so that's what, 9,000 <laughs> gifts per episode? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about this movie, Tango and Cash. I just want to first say that I never saw this movie. Like, mm-hmm. I've heard that this is like the worst movie. It's, it's ridiculed, like Ishtar. Tango and Cash, they're really? kind of thrown around as like... Oh, I didn't know it was that Me considered neither. that much of a failure. Oh, oh yeah, not even a, a failure as more of a like a... Just whoa, piece of shit. Yeah, piece of shit. Yeah, like, okay. this is like, why? And the backstory on it is like amazing, which I I'll talk about. I always get this movie confused with Tequila Sunrise. Oh, man, that's which a is, sexy movie. Is Mel the, Gibson. Uh, Mel Gibson and Kurt Russell, right? And, and Michelle Pfeiffer, yeah, yeah. That movie, I for a minute I thought that was this, and I was like, well, wait a minute, isn't this movie good? Yeah, no, And no. then I started watching it, I was like, oh, this is a very different movie. I will say that I've never seen a movie that starts, and I had to rewind it for June, where before the credits start, Stallone goes, Okay, let's do this. <laughs> like that. And then the music kicks in. Yep. Like, that is... Height of power. <laughs> it's the height of hubris. Hubris. I, assume, I was going right? to say, it is hubris. Okay, let's do it's this. It's the same hubris that allows him to call Rambo a pussy mm-hmm. and call um, somebody else in the movie Conan the Barbarian. Yes. He just thinks Stallone is at, like, just full strength at this point. Yeah. It's interesting yeah. because this is one of the few films Stallone did that he does not get attributed writing credit for. Thank God. Uh, which is really kind of bizarre, and I wonder if he took his name off of it, because he puts his name on everything. You might not know this, Nick, but we've covered this in the past. The, the book that the movie Cobra is based on, yes. uh-huh. Stallone tried to have himself put on a reprint of the book, book as the author, author of the book. Because he said he he did so much for the book? I think so. I think the, the thought was wow. people will buy the book yes. because it's based on the movie, so he should get a little bit of that money. Oh, is the movie, the book the was mo- based on the movie? No, no the, the movie, movie was based, based on, on the book, okay. but you would see them. <laughs> <laughs> but in, under Sly, under, under Sly's like, no, I mean, you know, the book is based on a movie. It came out before, but, you know. Um, so yeah, I gotta so this, say I thought he looked. I thought both of them they looked, looked great. 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 Yeah. yeah. How old do you think they are in this movie? Well, the movie came out in '89. I, so I would put them math. with. I would put them at around thirty-eight. 40? Yeah, I think they got to be forty. I, oh but, really? But I don't. know. I thought I like, a little bit younger. Like, all right, Stallone was born. Let's see. I was cu- I was trying to figure it out. I was like, what at what age are these guys in their like? How much of of this is the in their prime versus right. like starting to be I older felt guys? Like they now? were both in their prime. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Kurt Russell, by the way, always looks like he's in his prime. Like, he, he does. Yeah. He yeah. really so just great. looks great, yes. and his hair is another it's, entity. It's, it is yeah. amazing. Number gorgeous. one on the call yeah. sheet. Gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so um, beautifully wide and blockish. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It just grows out. There's he, so I much. I felt like he was wearing like a lot of boat neck, yes. yeah. wide neck. Well, he had worked on his like traps. I feel yeah, like it looked like, great. Yeah. Somebody looked was great. like, "You need a scoop neck." Yeah, yeah well, a lot I of think, scoops. Well, I think that um, <laughs> scoop that neck. <laughs> and Paul, you can. Yes. Um, you've done probably a little more research, but I'm of pretty course. sure that. Um, somehow, uh, Henley shirts are, are partly paid for the movie. <laughs> oh, and, <laughs> they, and it does feel like Tango and Cash is subject to Big Henley. You know um, what I mean? <laughs> well, it's very, it's interesting that the movie kind of, they're, they are a mismatched p- couple of cops. Just Go so I'll give, give you the ages. Stallone, 43. Kurt Russell, 38. Okay. Oh. Got it. Okay. Which kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, they are mismatched cops, but a lot of how they are seen as mismatched is how button up and crisp Stallone is in Armani suits mm-hmm. and how down and dirty Kurt Russell is in jeans and a hat. But yeah. now here's but here's the thing that I have a real issue with. The movie is about two mismatched cops. Besides the clothing, there is nothing that yes. really no. differentiates these mm. two cops. Like one's a stock like 
Because Stallone is apparently very rich from being a stockbroker slash cop, or not, no, being an investor in stocks. That was the craziest never, side plot. That's just a prototype you don't see every day. Yeah. <laughs> but like, like the a cop, cop who's who, playing the stocks. Yeah. <laughs> not only playing the stocks, like that to me is interesting, but playing the stocks and spending money on like very fine suits and driving beautiful cars. And like, people that's are like, like, you're oh, rich. You're yeah. a Beverly you're, Hills cop, so you're rich. That doesn't mean that you're, you're a Beverly Hills cop. Well, but now, but that was the <laughs> no, thing. Well, that's interesting what, yeah. turn of phrase. But, but by the way, that's what I was going to bring up. Like Beverly Hills cop, like that movie works ultimately because it's like the button up of Judge Reinhold and, and John Ashton and Ronnie Cox versus like Eddie Murphy. That's two different types Beverly of people. Beverly Hills cop, a movie Originally Cobra. meant to star Stallone. Stallone. And that became oh, Cobra. And Tango and Cash with music that was just yep. one slight note <laughs> off of yep. Beverly Hills By Cop. the same guy, Harold really? Faultmeyer. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, so it, but like that's like a difference <laughs> of characters. Like The way that they make it is like Kurt Russell's an inner city cop, and he's a Beverly Hills yep. cop. But they both investigate crime the same fucking crazy they're both, way. They're also both um, making drug busts. That, yeah, yeah. They are they're both like the drug narcotics detectives. They're, it's not like one of them is like... Like white collar busting, yeah. like like uh, 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 fat cats or something, and one's like street level. They are doing the same job just in different outfits. And according and in this movie, <laughs> any sort of bus. And I've been now alive for a, a, a long period of time. Tell us and about I've never, that. And I, well, look, I've seen a lot of things come long, and go. How long have you been alive? Well, um, I, look, let me say that uh, when I was born. Uh, ColecoVision was something that the oh kids played. Oh, no, yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we're all the way into the Xbox Ones. Anyway, I don't want to get into it. But <laughs> now uh, you age, you consider yourself age-wise in terms of gaming consoles. Yes, am I right? yes, yes. I'm uh, I'm four 3DOs. Because I, <laughs> I I remember when we had your D, your DS birthday. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a good one. A very good one. Uh, not as good as the uh, Atari Lynx birthday. The uh, <laughs> Deep, deep pull from deep the deck. But, you uh, jerked off to Echo the Dolphin. <laughs> well, who did it? Uh, that's how you control the game. The but like uh, uh, <laughs> I was saying, like the 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 thing that I loved clearly, there was a lot of problems with the edits, and they needed to cut to newspapers. And I've never mm-hmm. seen in mm-hmm. any newspaper mm-hmm. I've ever read like with a, like a uh, cop like next to like cocaine, like yeah. Hey, yeah. like you know, like, like yeah, yeah. The, those <laughs> those guys were like more honestly, they were in more newspaper headlines <laughs> than anyone in Los Constantly. Angeles. It would seem. Con- Constantly. Constantly. For everything from, I mean, I get it when they get framed and are sent to jail because they're great right. cops, but like they are constantly being written about in terms of their exploits as if they are the biggest people in the world. But then when they escape prison, spoiler alert, they nobody walk around Los Angeles them. and nobody recognizes them no. at all. And by the way, you can assume that there are probably great cops right now. I've never read a story about like a super cop. Like there's no super well, cops. Well, the newspaper game has changed, Paul. <laughs> so it's all digital now. It's all you're digital true, now. That's true. very Maybe true. I should read uh, a BuzzFeed slideshow about the best <laughs> cops in Los Angeles. Uh, uh, by ooh, the way, we are doing BuzzFeed slideshows on how did this get made now. Oh, yeah. We That's are a- covering BuzzFeed slideshows. How did this get made? Oh, my God. That's so actually many. what Kroll Show is going to be next year. <laughs> it's all, it's Buzz moving to BuzzFeed? Slideshow. Yeah, it's a BuzzFeed slideshow. <laughs> it's a listicle? <laughs> One of the best things in the beginning of the movie that I thought was going to be explained was we open up on Stallone. He's driving down this desert highway and delivering lines like he's on a flatbed with no energy at all. But he's trying to take down this, like, tanker truck. And he opens up his revolver, because that's, I guess, one of the defining things. He has, like, a revolver, like an old-school snub-nosed revolver. Dumps out the bullets, takes special bullets, yeah. and then fires them. He's like, well, what are these special bullets? Because, like, he just fires at a glass window. Like, yeah. were those bullets not capable of puncturing glass? Like, Yeah, who knows? Was that? I didn't understand They that. never explained what those special no. bullets so this were. The weird thing about the movie is, you, you, like you said, Jason, then you never get a sense of what is different about these two. Like, is this guy great at shooting? Is he? Does he have a great... He doesn't. I, he doesn't does, shoot either of the people right, in the truck. And is the other guy? You know, is Kurt Russell like super? You know, persuasive in interrogation. I, I well, don't, I they would. They both seem to be sort of just cops. I would point. <laughs> just I don't want to be the Nate. I don't want to be the Nate. Are you still, are you still writing that show? Um, <laughs> by the way, I also would. I I don't know if you guys have read the script. It's unproduced still yeah. at this point. But um, Stocks Cop is actually <laughs> is actually a is great. That right? Yeah, yeah that was that Sylvester's. Stock. That was the he's, Sylvester. Yeah. <laughs> but by the way, don't you don't you get uh, don't you get cop. don't but you I would, get the sense that he like Sylvester Stallone was like. I love this character. Right. Well, he's like, I've been playing the dumb guy forever, and I'm going to be the smart guy now. Oh, I, bet, I, I bet he was offered the other oh, parts first. Oh, 
And right. he was offered the other part oh, first, yeah. and, they, and he was like, "No, I want to play this. Oh, I will take down. I'm gonna take down Rambo." Like yeah. he takes down his own. Ca- but he by the shits way, on himself. He, and this is the weird thing: he never uses that intelligence to no. get them out, or 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 his knowledge of stocks. Well, I thought me, was gonna I, like, come back to me, at I'm some like, point. He should say like, "He goes, Rambo is a pussy," but it's like, no. In this guy, like you would say like. Rambo is a monosyllabic beast. Like yeah. I am an investor. You know, like, right. like what's the difference? He does. He's just Rambo wearing a shirt. doesn't wear glasses, Paul. <laughs> I don't know how many times. Which, by the way, he ditches about halfway through. Oh the yeah, movie. Oh, those yeah. glasses are gone. Once yeah. they go to prison, yeah. once they, they go to prison, they are indistinguishable from each other. Yeah, and Rambo those- loses glasses and or he loses glasses and then, and then all of a sudden he's wearing like a a, a, a crucifix. Like, yeah, crucifix. Here's I feel the- like yeah. Go ahead. No, here's the weird thing about them going to prison. They. So they go to prison. Because they're set up. They're set up. By Jack Palance. <laughs> Jack Palance playing a poor man's Jack Nicholson, which yeah. I've never yes. really know, right? Like, yes. he really yeah. felt like that. I mean, Jack Palance, by the way, June and I looked at each other, Dan, and we're like, I don't even understand what Jack Palance is doing. I don't know. I was going to, I had that too. I don't know what his, I mean, no I guess idea. he's an arms dealer and a drug dealer, I guess, but like, I don't know what, what the end? master plan what, is. Yes. Well, like, the master plan is like, there's some facility where he, like, he's just collecting all of it. Like, well, it, well, yeah. This is what was really weird too. So, so they're framed for the murder of a federal agent. Yes. So they go to prison for 18 months. <laughs> well, yeah. Because they <laughs> plead no contest. Does that okay. mean that you And by the way, so, I would just still I would just go back quickly and just I don't, I don't want to be the naysayer. You guys have a great show here. You got a great yeah, show. Yeah, very yeah, popular. What are you gonna say? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hit it up on Speak iTunes. Plainly. Go to Speak go plainly. to the podcast. Hey, how come the well, podcast? They're already listening. They're already listening to the show. Go check out the how podcast. Come the podcast ended. Oh, Nick Kroll came on and he blew the whole thing up. Okay, go ahead. So, they're all here. Go ahead. <laughs> so you it's have a great, it's actually audience. a great there it's a lot of great episodes. There have been a lot yeah. of great guest stars who've come and done the show. And anyway, so a hundred different well. Well, not 100 because I've come back a few times. Yeah, we had to really kind of start on burlesque and then um, obviously Kim, came Kelly, through for a lot. Kelly and Justin. Just, Kelly and Justin. Shout out twice in the in the remix to yeah. a couple different movies. Anyway. And also very you, you had some nice appearances in the uh, the best of episodes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, th- th- that's not the point. The point is that you, wh- what you guys are doing here is talking about movies and how did they get made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. Right, right, right. right. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank and, you. And? <laughs> That's it. So I didn't want to break momentum. I just wanted to get that. No, wow. <laughs> no, um, no. Hang on. That really makes me think. Um, I would just. Part, you guys keep saying that they're quite what have different. We done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys are that they're not different enough. I would point to the court scene. Yeah. Where <laughs> oh, yeah. Sylvester oh. Stallone oh, yeah. gets up and he's like, "Hey, respectfully, <laughs> you know, I love the cops. It's, you know, uh, you know, come out there." And then Kurt Russell. Yeah. Doesn't have control of his emotions. He really doesn't. Yeah. And he screams. <laughs> he's a wild coach. He yeah. screams, what the fuck, or whatever. Yeah. No, and this then, fucking sucks, is what he yeah, says. He yeah. says, this fucking sucks. Yeah. And, and then, gets a round and of applause. A round of applause, which makes me go, is anyone against these guys? Like, I don't, like, they're not even setting I up. I couldn't figure out. It was, there was such, such <laughs> bullshit police work was done in this movie. I was like, we need to call Sarah Koenig in and do a serial yes. on this court case. <laughs> yes. How these guys were written. The next wrote it. season of serial is about a <laughs> fictional Tango crime <laughs> in the movie Tango and Cash. <laughs> <laughs> calling calling well, Tango and Cash about, on the phone. This my is favorite a- thing about how they were framed was that, so there's a tape made, <laughs> there's a tape made that sort of mashes their voices together. So it sounds like they're having a conversation with a guy that they uh, didn't murder, but it sounds like they have. The, the guy who runs that sound lab who put that tape together. Yeah. What is that sound lab for? Oh yeah, so they they basically the one, of, one the of the reasons world. why they oh. why they are definitely put away is one of the most damning pieces of evidence is this sound this technician is an audio in. recording yeah. and he's like, well, that is actually them on the uh, that's them and then they're like, okay, great, that was it, that was and there was no real rebuttal to <laughs> it. Or do they have another? June. I don't know what his day to day job is. Some sort of. Foley Audio artist. expert, <laughs> you know, it's it. He seemed to me. I, he I bought says it at as one a, point that he is the foremost audio expert, and yes. he's. He's been a witness at other oh, trials. Man, Sarah Koenig I, I, would have a field day with this guy. What is his job? Well, I just was like, he's kept like, being like Gene Hackman in the conversation. He's like a, he's a surveillance uh, audio expert. I don't know. <laughs> I just like, kept wondering where Jay was. Like, why weren't we hearing more yeah, from Jay? Yeah, where was Jay? Where was Jay in the trial? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> 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 oh, by the way, uh, just before we get into the prison, too, um, 
This is a movie where, and again, it reminds me of like, I guess a different time, the 80s, where boobs were just, oh yeah. I was just going to say. Boobs were out in full force in this movie. Except only for, uh, only uh, kind of anecdotally. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it's like he, they're drive. there's a car chase in a, in a parking garage yes. in the morning. Yes. There's a morning car chase in a parking garage. In a, an apartment building. And they drive, one of the cars smashes into a parked Volvo and a naked woman pops out of the back. Who is fucking in a Volvo in the morning well, in a parking garage? Well, that's why I was saying like, and it's a parking garage in an apartment building. So it's like, you would think We'll just go upstairs and fuck upstairs. Like, what's going on? Uh, well, my, my, wife wife's wife's my wife is here. My wife is here. Meet oh. me in the Volvo downstairs. I'll, uh, I think it was also confusing because there's no real violence in the movie. I mean, there's you don't see blood a lot. You don't see, like, actual gore. So there's such a weird disparity between, like, oh, there's sometimes boobs around. Yeah. But no There's also, um, blood like, at real all. cursing. There's also a lot of very real yeah. cursing, you know, so it's like, it's just, but that's just, those kind of things aren't done anymore. I, I got to say, though, as man, and I'm a, I guess I'm just a nostalgia guy, but it was so great to see, like, 80s fake boobs. Oh, Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, you know, we've got, become accustomed to yes. a, a, a different like, kind of a, a fake boob. I felt like in, in the, the strip club, it, they were yeah. natural boobs. Let's um, even talk about that strip club, because I wasn't even sure it was, was a I strip wrote, club. is this a strip club? Well, yeah. Because it starts out with a motorcycle backing out of a <laughs> Guys, of Someone a has just done a show on a motorcycle. And it's huge. The place is enormous and has a fully mixed clientele. And yeah, I men don't think and it women. it was a strip club. What was it? I think it was <laughs> a place where people go to watch dances. <laughs> Tell me <laughs> everything. But, but, go. Uh, like look, what? I, look, I wish this place existed. It's a place you go <laughs> when you're going on a date or you're out with your significant other and you just want to watch dancing. You don't want to dance yourself. <laughs> what about, oh, wait, what about You want to have a nice cocktail and you want to sit down and you want to watch a show. Wh- you don't want to hear singing. You don't want to watch narrative. You just want to watch dancing. And, just and dancing. drumming. And electronic drumming. Because and electronic she, a part of Terry Hatcher, who is in this movie, and we can kind of get to her relationship uh, with who cares? The, yeah. But Terry Hatcher, <laughs> she comes out and she's dancing hardcore, like really. And she does take part of her outfit off. Yes, but not the yes, full but, thing. And th- isn't that the conversation they have before she leaves, where he's sort of implying that her dancing is not above board? Oh, I didn't and catch she, that. I yeah. think there's I was some implication to figure out of if, like, let's keep it classy. Oh, I, I thought it was like you got to take more off. Sly oh. says that to her? Oh, 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 Sly was saying that. Oh, I'm sorry. See, yeah. I didn't know who she was to Sly in the I beginning, and I thought, oh, oh is that his daughter? They want, on purpose. they want you to think well, they yes, want that to be But I was so obsessed with going, oh, that's his daughter. I thought it was his daughter as and well. And they they want you to think that's his girlfriend. But you know, that, that would kill Sly if you heard you say that. <laughs> <laughs> but Terry, I mean, he's like 43, and Terry Hatcher must have been like, Terry Hatcher must have been like 18. Yeah. yeah, like, I mean, yeah, she was born in I love that place, though. That you club. love that place. You that would like you would like that like, club to exist. Yes, I would love. You know what it that is? It's like exist. the modern version of the Xanadu Club. Yes, absolutely. It's where just dancing absolutely. happens. Absolutely, um, and not really like she a was dance 25. show. Terry Hatcher like, is okay. 25, but sort of little acts of dancing. <laughs> Wait a second. Little like no, five this was a strip <laughs> club without. Bo- this was a strip club where the women well, just didn't no, get naked. But, no, 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 but backstage. If, if they wanted it to be a strip club, they're fine with showing boobs. They would have just made it a strip club. But wait, yes, but there, no. Was, there were no, no but pools. No. Did these exist? At the, was there a time when clubs like this existed? Never. I wrote that down. I go, there has never been a time where a club like this well, existed. But I, it's it also was. a huge I think in the consciousness club. there was like weird 80s performance art and like. They're well, it just felt like she looked like Flashdance. Yes. Like it was like they yes. like, you know, he liked Flashdance. And, and and again, like with these movies, like Beverly Hills Cop, they'd always go to a strip bar in the middle of it. Like yeah. Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, like, like, oh, let's go get a drink at the strip club. Um, but this, like, I wanted to, I think if we understood what the motorcycle act would, was, we'd get a better idea. We only see the motorcycle coming off. Yes. She comes on, v- like, via a Stargate. Like, she's coming out of a Stargate, Stargate. that, like, kind of is on, like, electric motors, and then giant oh. drums pop Dude, up. All I could of these get... acts were not, the, all of the bits were not supposed to be sexy. If they were, that was great. Hers was sexy. They were just, and they weren't necessarily supposed to be dramatic or comedic. They were what, they're just, just like, dancing. You just, entertainment. has nobody yeah. here been to a, has no one here been to a variety club? <laughs> yes. That's what it was. Exactly. It was a variety club. And by the way, <clears throat> she drummed. And you know what I loved the authenticity of this movie is they didn't force her to have rhythm in nope. her drumming. <laughs> nope. It, it was, was awful. I was going to say, the outfit right? was, it was pretty awful. unflattering. Yeah. Yep. 
She looked great in she many other great. outfits. Yes. yes and it, but on stage, she did not look good. One of my favorite parts of, of her and her whole persona was when they were in her, her apartment later on, there is a giant, like, movies, movie poster size oh. picture of her in the corner, like, yeah. like a post <laughs> shot of yeah. her, like, in her room. I didn't notice that. And it was, it was just amazing. like a picture. And he, he points to the picture. He's like, hey, yeah, those things are going to the club. <laughs> but I do, I do think this was during a time where it, where the idea of, like, a career as a dancer meant something different. Yes. Where it wasn't like, oh, you're either a ballet dancer or you're a music video yeah. girl. Like, there was one other avenue. Well, this avenue. is the era this. of solid gold, right? Yes. 80, 89? So solid post, gold. 89? This is post, post solid, solid gold. Post solid gold slightly. Okay. Okay. This is, right, but, but there was still a time. But that's why publicity shot this, Or Flashdance, you're right, Nick. Flashdance had this. There was still a time when somehow, like, contemporary yes. dancing was something that was still watched or viewed. Or, I don't know what. But, yes. But this, it, it was enough. I mean, it was after it was done. I yeah. would say it is. I looked at Solid Gold. It is, but I guess it was, yeah. like, the remnants of Solid it, Gold. It, this, I mean, I guess it, maybe. But, but she's but, also playing drums. Like, that I, was, she wasn't even miming drums. Like, someone gave her sticks and she yeah. yells at that bartender who's very apoplectic about, uh, oh, I'm he's so having, sorry, I'm he's so having sorry. a real hard time, that bartender. <laughs> he's hey, getting he it from every direction. <laughs> well, I think that, I, I feel like that, I, I don't know what order it came in, but it, it's possible it was like, okay, so uh, he's dating he's dating a stripper. And then it's like, no, you know what? Let's make the twist that it's his sister and Tango wants the, you know, and Kurt Russell's going to want the sister. Yes. So then they're like, okay, but we've already built the strip club. <laughs> but there's no way Sly would let his sister be, be a stripper. stripper. Uh, oh, so okay. she's a dancer. Perfect. Done. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, then, and then, and, but we can Te- still get Terry, those. hey, it's your agent. Great news. You don't have to show your tits. <laughs> but we can still get all the tits we want when he goes backstage and all the girls. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, just so if you are keeping track, in the world of Stallone, uh, Tango's parents waited 18 years to have be- in between kids. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had their she first was a kid. real oops. <laughs> 18 years. <laughs> they had a kid like when they were 20 On and then deathbeds. 40. <laughs> <laughs> real mistake there. Oh, real mistake. I don't know. We, they, this was a huge mistake. <laughs> Also, I want to get into a little bit of uh, Jack Plant, uh, who is, I agree, like a poor man's uh, Jack Nicholson. He, they give him this monologue at the beginning where oh my God. he takes out two rats. <laughs> He's like, this is Tango. This is Cash. And then he tells a story <laughs> yeah. about these rats. And then he goes, you know, and then next week when all the drugs and money are going to be here, they're going to be behind bars and then he puts them in a maze he yeah. has but a like, maze he has a maze in his office he has yes. a, a rat maze t- built into a table yeah. in his which office which I love but also it's not really completing the metaphor nope. like you think he's gonna I take see, these actually... two rats and then kill them nope but he's like and then and they're then... gonna be in jail or a maze <laughs> that <laughs> is they... still someplace yeah. that's tough to get out of <laughs> well because they could well, I was gonna say like, well, I was gonna say like a like where how what would a rat jail be? And then you're like, oh, a cage. Yep. Like he could have right. put them in two right. separate cages, and it would have been well, this, yes, what jail he, is. He literally goes behind bars and then puts them in a maze. Like it's like you could have picked any way, different that, ver yeah. adjective to be like, and we're gonna you know we'll see, they'll weirdly, never get out. Yep. Like right. The right. very end though, when they were. Driving those trucks through that compound. Oh yeah, that's that when I the thought maze. the metaphor. Yes. Yeah, I was like, oh okay, so now. But they were never supposed to get there. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, yeah. Did he have the foresight? Well, he had foresight enough to not only. <laughs> <laughs> this guy loves mazes. To not only have a maze worked out and have all those other guys with all those other trucks with rocket launchers on them, <laughs> but he also was able to enable a. Um, a self-destruct function to his entire warehouse <laughs> and have it's someone like, record an announcement for it that says <laughs> that says facility destruct, destruct sequence now engaged. <laughs> like who I who laughed, recorded the that? Sound lab guy. Like, what? I yeah. laughed so hard at that. It was like it's like a scene out of Star Trek when yeah. they blow up the Enterprise in Star Trek 3. It's like they like that's the only time I've ever seen yes. a self-destruct for a building? Yes. Yeah. Why would you ever have Get rid a of the evidence. Get rid of the evidence. Paul. And why do you need to announce it and it's 11 <laughs> minutes away? <laughs> Self-destruct, now engaged. You have 11 minutes. Well, that uh, that's like a that very I- long time. I would argue that, so whoever 
was the production designer was very, very territorial and and very oh, sure I, about what he was doing because it was like, no, the bar. Look, the bar is a club, and there's the stage, and it raises, and there's a ramp, and everything moves back with the fan and everything. Also, the office where Jack, Jack Palance's office is gonna feel like a club too. I, <laughs> there, <laughs> there's gonna be a bar. The uh, his desk is gonna be uh, raised on a stage. There's gonna be a lot of glassware on. Sh- oh my god! Glass. And, 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 that works and because gonna, we have a guy who loves to kick glass shelves. <laughs> and, so and we just cast him as a bad guy, so he can come in. He can kick all the glass shelves. Perfect. And 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 he's and he's gonna have a whole room full of glass like Enter the Dragon. Anyway, we'll get into that later. I wrote down here. I hate this set designer because there's a bunch of questions, <laughs> and his name is J. Michael Riva, and. Uh, Apparently he's done some great stuff. Django Unchained, Iron Man, Spider Man. Wow. <laughs> like wow. he's done a lot. But in this movie, he had lost his mind because there's a <laughs> scene where these are my two examples I really want to talk about, where Kurt Russell walks into the bathroom where there are police lockers uh-huh. next to a urinal, and then there's a table and chairs next yes. to that. So it yes. would be like, what do cops just go, ah, fuck, I'll just sit down in this chair and face the urinals. <laughs> it was like putting like a, a kitchen table next to a urinal. Like, but they needed the kitchen table because he needed to like... In well, fairness to J. Michael Riva, I feel like that was just a production <laughs> quandary. Like, okay. I, I don't... He did Goonies I, too. This guy has yeah. a lot of very solid... I think they were probably things. just like, we can only do this in one set and we already have the locker room, so... yeah. This is where the interior. Yeah, we just need to put a table in here. Yeah. Right. Well, then, I, then, I, then the other one thing I'll talk about is um, in the prison when uh, <laughs> Stallone and Kurt Russell. We'll get into the prison when they're kidnapped and put into the laundry room. There's a big fight in the prison laundry room. But then there also are cells in the laundry room too, because guys, yes. the arms are like, yes. so you're like, so who built the prison? Like, ah, yeah, we'll just keep them in. Like, they don't have. And the laundry room is like a, a, the size of an airplane hangar, mm-hmm. and there are cells built into it. So it's like, oh, where are you? I'm on sub D. Where are you? Yeah. Oh, I'm in the laundry room. I'm in the laundry room. <laughs> I'm in the laundry room cells. <laughs> I mean, it's very probably, um, you know. But honestly, I would die for the shower setup that they had in jail. Like, if I had that shower, oh like, they God. had, like, multiple, they had plenty of space. They had well, that's beautiful, just because nobody else was in it. Right, because they, why? By the way, why it looked did like they, they, they have t- the showers to themselves? Like they, were taking, because like, they were like taking a really, like, it's like, all right, before you guys get to prison, just take a nice, long, <laughs> private scene shower. Was so long. They yeah. give them so much private time together. Yes. Yeah. If for people that are about to be set up to be killed, they give them all the time yep. in the world to chat, hang out. They, can, they seem to be able to move to and Very from each other's cells. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I want to actually play the clip where they are in the showers because it's one of the best, like, the who's on first of this movie is yeah. a, a dick size argument. Oh. And just to set the scene, they've been taking this shower for a long time, and you'll, you'll understand what's happening uh, if I just tell you that at one point, Kurt Russell bends over, and Stallone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. So that's where we're kind of coming in on. So here you go. I don't know yet. Yeah. You don't know shit. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Relax. Soap, and don't flatter yourself. Pee wee. I don't know you that well. Don't worry, Cash. Someday the other one will drop. <laughs> Out of boy, tripod. <laughs> Just keep talking. Good thing, Minnie Mouse. Okay, classic. Yeah. Question: is, well, it, is it classic though? Because I'm confused. When tr- someone maybe this is gonna I'm no, gonna I have a question reveal about too this much. Thing. But when someone has a bar of soap. And they well, lean bend the bending down. over person is the one that's going to be violated, not the person. Right, that's right. That, yeah. He's going to pick up the bar of soap. He's right. Going to well, pick I it up, think but he's the, bending down to pick right, it up. The implication is that Kurt Russell's going to bend down and, and suck on Sly's knob. <laughs> oh, I thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> I but think that's I that. But, the but, I, but that's not the that's thing. play. I have it's a question. play, and guys, I don't want to be the contrarian. <laughs> it's a play on the who dropped the soap thing. I got. I, it's no, a play on it. Okay. It's a well, play the thing that I had the I bigger think. issue with, and this is I thought you were gonna bring up, when someone is called tripod, that means that they have a, a very big, big dick. A big dick. Well, my guess is that my my guess is that Sly couldn't let it lie with being called Pee Wee, so then yeah. they had to like. Do another one where he called him tripod. So then you're confused yeah. about whether he's got. It a big really dick or a small is dick. a very strange. He calls him small dick, and then immediately 
calls him Big Dick. Right. And then later on, <laughs> they talk about his dick later, I think, yep. And he too. calls him Minnie Mouse or something like that. Yeah, and, and like, and they really are examining each other's dicks. Like, they, it seems like There's too a, the, much dick. T- like There's, the, the gay panic in this movie is very <laughs> bizarre and unsettling. It's constant, and it's constantly a joke. It's, well, I would say it's not, I don't know if it's gay panic, because it's almost like a gay, it's like sort of a gay, a slight gay hug. Because he keeps being like, I don't know you well enough yet. Like, <laughs> we're not even engaged. Like, it's like this constant sort of like, so what's your, like, it's always. But Stallone a, is seemingly, if you were to say, like, the more emotional one. Because at one point, he's like, you're the best cop I've ever worked with. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then, like, the, I guess the, the whole thing about will they, won't they in this movie is will they or won't they high five? Yes. <laughs> like, yes, that, yes that's, that is, that's the will that's they, the, won't they. That's the money shot at the end is a high five, which is crazy. And you also don't forget you get the um, cross-dressing Kurt Russell oh, scene. That was amazing. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, this movie is Fuck, when that it's happened, so weird. Yeah. I really was blown. My mind was blown. Am I to understand that that is Terry Hatcher's motorcycle regardless? No. No, it's the other guy. Go- no. no, it's the but motorcycle we're, act from that went on before got her. Oh. So we're so then we're what we are meant to assume is that she can and does drive a motorcycle easily. The only reason why they set up that shot of the motorcycle act oh. that we saw a glimpse was of was of so the that because the setup is like, yep. well, we think he's going to come out as the motorcycle guy. Yes, and of course he doesn't. She, she does. does, and then she whistles and says, "Come on, babe," and, and it's then we get him. In what must have been two and a half hours of makeup, yes, to make well, him look like a thing. woman. At this point, which by the way, you know, he's, he's done on, now twice. This is in the back of well, the yeah. not strip club, by the way, just for people to understand. Right. Yeah. This is in the back of the not strip club. The police are converging in on an them, alley. and this is the only way they can escape. And he's on the lamb. I mean, he's really he's the most wanted man in Los Angeles. Yes, yeah. and instead of just sort of rustling out and jumping on Kurt the back rustling and, out. What <laughs> <laughs> you say? Instead of Kurt rustling right out of there, he stands there posed for a long time. Oh, yeah. He gives the cops a million shots of his face. And he, then he, pulls he, his he, at one point, down. At one point, he whistles to the cop <laughs> to make the cop look at him <laughs> and then gives him a kissy face. It was so weird. Uh, and and then they put him in it, and they don't even really let him have fun no, as a woman. It's like, not like Junior. No, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, this is like a little, uh, we've seen now two action stars dressed as women in the last two movies. Uh, but he, like, and when he's, like, called to speak, you could tell he's real nervous. Like, oh, yeah. oh Kiki. And, like, <laughs> and, like they, don't, they don't, like, let him do much. Like, they don't, or he didn't weird, let them. Though. Or he was like, I'm not doing any of this shit. I oddly, gonna... I oddly feel like Kurt Russell was like more cool with dressing up as a woman like than probably any, yeah like than Stallone. Well, there's a lot of like panic in this movie about masculinity. I mean, there's oh, yeah. that. Yeah. There's also sort of like preserving her virginity and the panic over. Oh yeah, is Kurt that? Russell? Did you bump uglies with my sister? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and how many times do they say foobar? They keep oh, setting yeah. up oh, yeah. foobar. Here's the thing, like, and and it's a it's one of my favorite mechanisms in a movie, and it's the it's the classic sister twist. And it's you find out that what's your that Terry Hatcher is uh, you know Sly's sister, but it's such a convenient thing because it lets two men who want to fuck each other have a surrogate, so that like oh, Kurt <laughs> can fuck the sister because yeah. like Sly and him can't right at you least know? publicly publicly. And I'm not saying Kurt and Sly, but it's like within that movie, yeah. they're the, the no chemistry, the chemistry yeah. is they, I mean they're like I owe you one, you got my back. They are always they saving each, each other. other and looking each other's eyes. Guys, it's the original bromance. <laughs> <laughs> what? what I loved about this movie. Oh, we, we gotta talk about the massage scene. When oh, yeah. when Stallone finally catches his sister and Kurt Russell together, she's giving him a regular massage. Hang on though. Yes. Why? I why, has the their, why has their relationship escalated to the point where she is in she nothing? She just met them. She's in nothing but a kimono. He yeah. is, I don't know, we're wearing Undressed. just pants. And she is giving him a full-on rub down. Because he sitting, hurt his back? Sitting on his sitting on him. And it's sitting yeah. on him, and and at first it's like, oh yeah, that's good, that feels good, and then it heightens when Stallone's watching it to a point of, like, oh, can you feel it? Oh yeah, hard, I feel it. hard. Oh, it's in, it's in, it's all the way in. As June turned to me and said, what, what, what is in? Like that, you've Her never finger in his butthole. <laughs> 
That's the only way you can get to that I was like, vertebrae. You've never, yeah. you've I never what said that in? term. Like, oh yeah, you got my back back in. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you're right in there, real deep. And she's like this. She's like, oh, oh, yeah, like she's, she's excited. Yeah, she's giving the massage. <laughs> yes. What well, it, it was ridiculous. It's like, and that the, that scene went on just a little bit longer than you needed it to go on. It was like. He could bust in. He already, it looks like she's fucking him. Why did she need to like stand in the darkness and watch this scene where they weren't even fu- like just to get more upset? Like, yeah, there was- because there are no two people in this movie and probably the world that Sly's character wants to fuck more than Kurt Russell and his sister. Well, I definitely so think he's they were like, off on being, you know, they definitely were like one of these guys needs to have a crush on a girl, otherwise everybody's gonna think they're gay. <laughs> Um, can we Especially talk- with all of the, there's a lot of prison gay stuff. But they also show uh, Stallone and Kurt Russell walking with their asses out, like totally oh, yeah. naked, away from camera, like yeah, hey, yeah, like just ass shot, like man, like that's like Mel Gibson, like that was another era where it was like action stars show their asses. Oh yeah, like they're this. Outfit. Well, that I feel like that was because it drove the ladies wild. <laughs> June, so were you weird. driven wild? No, and I have to say, and I think I've said this before, like to me. <sighs> The shot of a man's ass, does, and I, I think I speak for most women, does nothing. Right. Like, I, I don't know what, because I remember that in the 80s and it's in so many movies of like these beautiful tender shots of men's asses and in what if commercials the man... of like men in jeans and asses. And I do think it's very homoerotic, mm-hmm. but it's not, I don't think it's for women You don't think it's hetero? Oh, I don't think so. What if Maybe the guy's a real, women, but what if the guy's a real hunk? Then that's great, but I don't, personally, I don't need to see his ass. No. You and would much fact, rather see, like, his say, abs? I think I'd rather not. Yeah. I think I'd rather not. You're not like a, you're not the kind of lady that's like, ooh, ladies, you've no. got to see this movie because of the buns, <laughs> the no. hot buns and on display. I don't think many women are into asses. And you th- and you say, yeah, that's it. You you think you speak for all women? I, I'm going to speak <laughs> for all women. Yeah, and say, okay, so <laughs> listeners, if, if you agree with June on that, just and by the way, go out thing. and listen to How Did This Get Made. Go get uh, yeah, you your should hands definitely on that podcast. I think we're on it. They're here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because of the, statements like this. This uh, one of my favorite lines in the prison was uh, <laughs> it was Kurt Russell to Stallone, and he goes, "They cut his throat ear to ear." You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. It's That's like, not that a was, not a metaphor. You, yeah, just, <laughs> you just described it perfectly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, they cut his throat right ear to ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it. One of my other favorite prison. In fact, mo- we were talking about it just earlier in the movie <laughs> yeah. when the guy held a razor blade to your throat and said he was going to cut it ear to ear. Um, one of my other favorite uh, prison moments is Clint Howard. Uh, oh yeah, in a, in a one of his finer performances. Is that fair to say? One of one oh, of for sure, for one sure. of his more understated. Apollo- Apollo 13 and then this. He he says, uh, yeah, I kill my best friend, and then points to a uh, newspaper News- article that says, man kills best friend. <laughs> 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 Newspapers like, in this <laughs> world were like so <laughs> literal. <laughs> the newspaper budget on this, like that's where all the production designers' money was going. He's like, look, we we can't do, we can't separate the interrogation room from the urinal room. <laughs> we can We're overextended on newspaper budget. <laughs> we also have spent forty five thousand dollars on slinkies. I wish, I wish it all, so I wish, weird. I wish all the transitions of this movie was just a newsboy throwing newspapers off uh, the back of a truck. Okay, but Ooh, I did bam. wonder about that shot because I think were they trying to. Have the audience really believe because we can't trust the narrator of the crazy person that this happened? Well, right. the crazy, oh, was that's that it? Doesn't yeah. Clint Howard he also go? It. I, I'm, I, I kill my best friend because I'm crazy, and crazy people do anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, like, yeah, we got like. But really, then he sort of seems to have settled down. Like Sly has control of him. Later well, in remember, the movie. Sly yes. tie, takes the slinky and like ties him to the bed oh. with his slinky. And by the way, that door that was like a prison dorm room. Like there yeah. was a, there was literally a sign above the door that said exit, like like a stolen sign. Like they don't let you decorate your prison. Like they have like <laughs> hanging like toys and stuff like that. It's not like that loose. No, everything. In this prison, the prison doors are always open. Everybody's always socializing, yeah. it seems like. Everybody has access to each other. They're like, at one point, Kurt Russell is in Stallone's 
a cell visiting, and he's like, come on, man, we got to go. And a guy comes to and is like, hey, come on, you're late for work. Yeah. I was like, what? What do you mean, come on, you're late for and work? Then like, and, and then, then he cuts to work, and they're like, you're 30 minutes late. This is prison. And he's and like, was, oh, sorry, boss, I'll do bad. I'm trying yeah. my best. He's like, all right. <laughs> like, it was like, this, it is prison. <laughs> By the way, I have I've now lived in L.A. for seven years. It rained Brand. more in this movie <laughs> than I have ever in my seven years. Wow. It had rained. But, oh, okay, sorry, just another yeah. time thing is they get framed for murder, right? Yes. Yeah. Then, because Palin sets it up. He's like, I'm going to get these, you know, get yep. these. Yeah. We got the biggest shipment in the world coming in in a week, week and a half. Next yeah. week. Yeah. So and these guys get arrested, framed for murder, and are on trial and go through an entire trial within the next week. And yes. escape. I've never yes. seen the legal system function so fast. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's impossible to that this would have happened this way. Impossible. Impossible. Um, let's talk about... How did this get made? Um, <laughs> iTunes. I want to talk about um, the video footage in this movie. This movie also, like, the big... Like video like, phones and stuff yes, like that? Yes. Yeah. Everything was on video phones yeah. in this movie. Which were just, like, old TVs. Yes. Old big screen TVs. And then the one thing that was so funny was there, the, like, uh, <laughs> Pal- Palance has, like, a guy that, like, works... The Beverly Hills unit and the guy who works like the, the mm. Lower East Side, and they were always together. And he calls them up on the phone, and the camera for their video phone, which is doesn't seemingly controlled by anyone, is just zooming into <laughs> their faces and zooming out, like like that. Like what technology is that? Mm. And uh, and then in the oh, we haven't even talked about the Q. The, the 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 James Bond Q. Oh God! The guy who works for the LAPD oh, research in, division. The guy he's one of the guys in Scrooge. Oh yes, he's one of the uh, homeless guys in Scrooge. And who's building um, a stuffed animal dog with a gun in its mouth <laughs> that is to protect elderly people at home alone. <laughs> What? Michael J. Pollard, by the way, is his name. And what, he, is, what on earth is that about? It, well, but he also goes, you know, he's the one who came up with my uh, my boot gun. He, which was like, do you uh, think our tax dollars are going toward anything yes. even remotely like this? Oh, one hundred percent, yes. I mean, this is so crazy. It, the LAPD <laughs> does not have a special unit to make weapons and vehicles. Also. Kurt Russell is the most wanted man in Los Angeles and walks into an LAPD facility. Nobody recognizes him. Yes. Except his buddy. He's not in disguise. He's not in disguise. He's not trying to be subtle. He's waltzing through. He's walking by people. He says, I need guns. His buddy gives him guns. Then he walks back out by all these other people. It's, the movie is so stupid. Here's what's weird, too. Beyond, like, their... Beyond figuring out the tape of it all, they don't do anything to get themselves off when they're released. You mean sexually? No, I mean, like, <laughs> they don't try to prove that they didn't do it. No, they are just trying to um, get at Jack Palance, I think. And I would argue they're actually doing plenty to get themselves off sexually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to talk about— Separate, separate thing. I, I want to— uh, Okay, so and just to finish off uh, the 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 special, you know, victims uh, unit. Yeah, <laughs> they just take off with that truck. Like they don't even have to sign anything, or like they're just like he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah go 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 take our our super truck. They're, yeah, and that the man, super I truck guess, built that. The super truck looks like that's the car? only thing I remember from that movie when it came out was like the super truck. Well, that's the eighties. It was yeah. all about uh, super RVs, super mm-hmm. trucks, vans. It's like the A team, stripes. Mm-hmm. It's it's all it's all male buns, <laughs> tight male buns, and like souped up like vans. <laughs> as the as the height of holy shit, can you believe this yeah. exists? It's excess. Yeah. It's a fucking well, van <laughs> with a machine gun stapled to it. <laughs> like there was a scene in every A team where they did just this, where they took a tractor and turned it into a weaponized tractor where they took any item with wheels and turned it into that with guns and wheels Mm -hmm. and that was a huge deal I don't know why there's there's so many things I want to share with you and I just feel like just for the sake of this I want we can I can just throw you a fact and we can discuss first of all the film went over budget by how much how much do you think it went over budget newspaper budget included (laughs) or is that okay Uh, I'd say it went over by 10 million okay 20 million. Okay. Paul, $1. Okay. <laughs> $20 million 
over budget. Wow. $20 million. Listen to this. This is the other thing here. The movie went into production in June. Directors were changed in August. Oh, wow. Principal photography was finished in September. Then a new director was brought in for two more weeks of reshoots. So that's and strange. then it was filmished, film, finished filming on October 20th, eight weeks before its original theatrical opening. <laughs> oh, my God. So it opened and they could finish, right? Oh. Um, Patrick Swayze was originally cast as Cash. He left for Roadhouse. Amazing move. That's why the hair. Amazing. That's the yes. hair. Yeah. Dodged Stallone, a bullet. Stallone had Barry Sonnenfeld fired as a DP because he wasn't lighting him correctly. Oh wow. God. Um, and then in the scene where the SUV catches fire, they couldn't put the fire out. And Stallone and Russell were in that car, and Stallone was burnt because he is hair caught on fire in the SUV. <laughs> wow. They almost were killed. Uh, and a crew member a crew member said, uh, this is the worst organized, most poorly prepared film I've ever been on in my life. From the day we started, no one knew what the hell we were doing. Um, there was a, apparently a very big debate because the director was a very serious Russian filmmaker who co-scripted Andrei Rube, uh, Rubelev oh. with Andrei Tarsovsky and filmed a Russian adaptation of Uncle Vanya and directed Eric Roberts to an Academy Award nomination in Runaway Train. Like, oh, so wow. a high-level director uh, and then replaced by the director of Purple Rain. Um, and and uh, hence all the rain scenes. He's like, I got one sequences. big note. I got one big note. Oh, and by yeah, that's why she's like Sheila E. Exactly right. drumming away. Um, they the producers sued Warner Brothers, trying to not release the movie because Warner Brothers took the movie away, gave it to Stuart Baird, who re-edited the entire movie to make sense. He did the same exact thing for Demolition Man, another Stallone movie. Holy cow! Uh, but they were trying to sue them because they Stallone's like, this is my guy. I make a <laughs> shitty movie, and this guy turns it. Into gold. I mean, this is just the craziest. Well, it's it's Goober, Peters and Goobers, right? Yes. Or, or yeah. Is that their name? They Peters and Goober wanted the movie to be goofier and campier, while Stallone and Konolowski wanted it to make it more serious. So there was two uh, tones at play, and then they couldn't uh, get they couldn't get Harold Faltmeyer in at the end of the movie to do the last reel. So the last reel of the movie. <laughs> Is, Some, is done it, by somebody else. else. Wow. Oh. And then there's sorry, there's a couple more things here that all of them were pretty great. Well, sorry, uh, just to uh, yeah, please. one of the, one or I don't know if it's Goobers or Peters uh -huh. uh, was uh, start, got his break as Barbara Streisand's hairstylist. That's John Peters. John Peters. Hence, I would say the Kurt Russell hair. The no, focus I think on that's Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell's hair. Yeah, that's Kurt yeah. Russell's hair. I mean, that's that's Snake Pliskin's hair. That's I think like it's that's his hair in his prime yeah. too. Big, yeah. big yeah. trouble in Little China. Yeah. Um, and then these are the uh, the only other two things that are worth mentioning. Well, there's so many great things. When Tango and, Esca uh, Tango and Cash escape from prison, Cash turns to Tango and asks if he stopped for coffee and a Danish. Tango says, I, I hate Danish. Yeah, yeah. You know why? Oh, because he'd just gotten divorced from, from Brigitte Nielsen, who's oh, Danish. Oh, that's what I was, I didn't think, I was like, why is that line in there? And now I'm like, oh, that's, God, that's why. amazing. And, and isn't she, I, mean, I guess she's not Swedish. <laughs> I guess, yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, this is the other one. Uh, the guy who had the Australian accent or the English yeah, accent, yeah. that guy <laughs> only had two lines. But Stallone thought it would be really great if he did it in a Cockney accent. And they started to expand that part just based on Stallone going, that would be fun to have this guy do a much larger. That is so insane and depressing. Well, it's an, to me, the movie is in general uh, like a, a story of like a man at the height of his power. Not at the height of his powers, like not at the height of like, oh, this guy's a brilliant filmmaker. Just like so powerful that he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make jokes about my own movies. I'm going to make fun of my ex, my now ex-wife, and yeah. I'm going to give a guy with a bad accent a ton more lines. <laughs> and I'm going to make him do the accent and then give him more lines. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. That is very. One, that's all. One awesome. more newspaper um, note: the last newspaper. Shouldn't scene, you consider yourself a newspaper expert? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did notice in the last newspaper insert shot, n right next to on the front page of. Whatever newspaper that was, right next to the article about Tango and Cash being released is an article <laughs> on the left oh, yeah. that's titled simply "Children Who Dress for Success." <laughs> well, but it's also next. It's all what does that mean? The, the, uh, what could that mean? The, it's a front page. It is a front, front page, page children article. Children. children. 
who, who dressed. dressed. <laughs> <laughs> now the uh, now the wow. thing that I thought was equally interesting is on the other side of that article. That was the one where they're back on the force. It says the other big lead article of that day was ask not what the critics say. <laughs> that was the article. Ask not what the critics say. Clearly going like great headline. All you critics, oh, wow. you're yeah. gonna criticize. But like, what is he? What is that? What oh. story is that? Ask not what the critics hey, say. That's an the, op-ed. If did anything, you see the Times er- earlier? Yeah. Ask not what the critics <laughs> say, man. Great article. <laughs> great Powerful article. Piece. Great article on By that the way, topical you, news story. <laughs> did your son pick out a three-piece suit because he's starting third grade tomorrow? <laughs> um, and do you know Tango and Cash, <laughs> the famous cops, have been released? <laughs> <laughs> they, cleared, they cleared their name. Yeah. Um, and can we just talk about, before I get into some of these second opinions, um, what was the glass room that uh, Jack Plants escapes into? The, the room mirror of mirrors? Why was there God a funhouse mirror room? Well, he just like, goes, God like, knows. what was the, like, if he's like, well, if they ever catch me, I can run into my funhouse. <laughs> yes. I think that was the idea, that it was sort of this panic room where they couldn't <laughs> tell. But right. it's like a, fu- it's, it's a carnival house of mirrors right. room. Literally a room and behind a bookcase just full of mirrors. Well, and and a, this exists in a warehouse facility full of weapons. In and, an and office, landmines? apparently, and an office that is looks like you're right the 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 the, the office of a strip club. And so it, it really is a real a real mashup of stuff. And then that that scene too, where it's like, which one is Jack? But by the way, so who cares? Like if they shoot a well, mirror, not all of them, yeah. right? And just shoot everything. <laughs> and then on top of that, it was like. How do you know? It was, you know, yeah. it's like I knew by the monogram. He's like, oh, I knew by the ring, or like whatever. And it's like, oh, they're both great cops. But it's also like right. they knew right? by this, they knew by that. But it, it has nothing to do with why they knew. Like it wasn't like, oh, well, you're the smart Beverly Hills guy, and yep. you saw that. Like no. you're, you're like, the street oh. smarts guy, and you're the book smarts. Yeah, guy. exactly. There was there was never a difference besides that speech, that impassioned speech scene. <laughs> Um, obviously, we had an opinion about this movie, but there are other people who had a different opinion. It's now time for second opinions. Don't, 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 don't underestimate a great movie. Don't, 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 don't underestimate a great movie, you idiot. Second opinion, second opinion, second opinion, second opinion. Five stars, five stars, five, five stars, five stars. Second opinion, second opinion, second opinion, second opinion. Five stars, five stars, five, five stars. Who are these critics? <laughs> these are second opinions that are cold from Amazon. Five star reviews. Guys, get ready. Buckle up because these are good. All right. Uh, I'll start off with this one. Uh, this is from Vladimir Petrov. Five out of five stars. One of Stallone's best. I really liked this movie. It was funny and full action. I really didn't notice the plot, but it had a lot of good action in it. Get this movie. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> he didn't notice the plot. He didn't notice the plot. Um, okay, and then this Ooh, one. That's amazing. <laughs> this one is five out of five stars. By the way, I don't think anyone making that movie noticed it either. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, it, you, know, you know the score is good when you don't really hear it. It's uh-huh. sort of the same thing. Like, <laughs> you know movie's good you when really you don't remember it. it. It's yeah. like I only heard the score in Beverly Hills Cop, right. so, I, and, so I don't remember <laughs> right. it from no, this one as well. It's really uh, such Beverly Hills Cop music. Um, oh, it's hilariously XLF. Yeah. Um, lots of action for gals like me. Watching Sly and Kurt's cute buns and hot bods All running right. through the movie. Oh, there you there you go, June, now you get looks like, out. looks like you don't speak for this one. Oh, wow. Um, Terry Hatcher is great for the guys to see. She can act, but she can't dance. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Lots of one-liner wisecracks and great second performances. What is that? What is I that don't mean? know. Jack Palance is a hilarious chief villain. Jeffrey Lewis, who incidentally didn't get listed in the credits. <laughs> what? Clint Howard and more. A fine, as fine of a plot as one expects for an action flick. Come on. It's a movie. And a mighty fun one at that. Oh, my God. Two L.A. cops rivaling for headlines. I don't know <laughs> if that was really the thing. And and a high total of drug busts. Um, and, oh, sorry, the, and the bad guys that try to take them out. Not to mention zany characters along the way. Why can't Hollywood make a Clive Cussler novel like this? Funny, witty, lots of action, just like it's written. As an Aussie villain puts it, balls to, balls to plan A. As a B movie, this one gets my vote. 
So this guy's a lot of a pay- wow. oh, lady wants a yeah. Clive Cluster movie. Um, and she, then and she loves those buns. Love <laughs> loves those buns. those buns. Here's another great, a little bit long one, but Tango and Cash are the ultimate duo, which spawned such great gatherings as Van Damme and Rodman, Seagal and Waynes, what? Schwarzenegger and Legozamo. Yes, they are the city's two best cops and frame for a murder. Resentment. <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy should know better than to mess with Stallone. And an extra bonus, Kurt Russell. Cash is a loudmouth who doesn't take anything from anyone. And Tango is immortal, isn't an immortal, dressed in Armani, chic. Cash falls in love with huh? t- Wait, is, is Armani Stallone period immortal in this movie? <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> is he a Highlander? You didn't notice that in the plot? Wait, is he a Highlander in this that movie? That is what it Cash falls in love with Tango's sister, played by Terry Hatcher, and the fun starts all over again. <laughs> Gadgetry! <laughs> a gidget person, a gidget person, a gidget person, a gidget person helps the two partners and constructs the ultimate car <laughs> with guns built on the sides. Oh, baby! The fight scenes are incredible, and the showdown between Jack Palance and the partners is undeniably engaging. Holy cow, baby! Timothy, five stars. Just a side note: wow. I was recently at a party, and I met Sally Field, and she. Speaking of gidget, yeah, sure. she had a lot of trouble like working her way through like a bite of prosciutto. <laughs> <laughs> and, Sorry, just sign up. Well, would we recommend seeing this movie? That's the question. Hmm. I would. I, 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 I was engaged. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it I was didn't... fun. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Nick? I mean, I, I love the movie. I'm a huge... <laughs> I'm a, I loved it. And, yeah. I, and I also love the, uh, the podcast, How Did This Get oh Made? It's gosh. great. You're already you should on go it. You're and on check it. Check that, it out. This is that podcast. You can go to earwolf.com. You can go uh, to iTunes. Yeah, you're already Earwolf. on it. Put it on your RSV feed. RSV? RSS. RSV RSS. feed? Yeah. Wow. You're uh, a real gidget head. <laughs> <laughs> a big thanks to Brett Morse, our engineer, Avril Halley, who pulls all of our clips. Nate Kiley, who does all of our research. Leanna Waldron, who designs all of our amazing graphics. And you can thank them. I don't know. Find them. Thank them. They're awesome. See you next week.